come down this pathway and would you look at this beautiful mausoleum it is huge it's almost like a temple Hi guys and welcome back. So today we're in Trollbridge Cemetery. Um, it's about a 20-25 minute um, journey by Uber and uh, this place is huge. So we're going to take a walk around and have a look, see what we can find. So straight away I have noticed this huge mausoleum. Now the interesting part of this is not only its size but we have four headless I'm presuming dragons around it we have some brickwork now that has come away from the walls which you can see there as I said all around it, around the corners, we have those dragons. We have trees actually growing out of the roof, which is quite amazing. But I love those dragons. I'm presuming they are dragons. We have more beautiful designs here. We have more like a gargoyle. Also headless, just above the door. This beautiful door down these steps, look at that. We have more designs just over the door. Beautiful round window over the door. This is our third headless dragon. So it's a shame that they have all actually lost their heads look at that for designs and just down there at the corner our fort dragon so it is actually beautiful but such a pity that it is in ruins right down to the dragon's feet look at them the claws its wings these beautiful marble pillars more designs there these gorgeous vented windows. We'll take a close look at the designs over the door as well. Look at that. Now it has been, obviously somebody has come and they were obviously open maybe or almost open. It is padlocked. But look at that for a, a gorgeous window. And then we have two angels, one holding a cross and another, it seems to have an anchor. So I'm going to see if I can show you any kind of thing inside. I'm not sure we'll get a look at all maybe, but we'll have a look. I might actually turn a light on. I'm not sure you'll see anything, but just through here. I'm not sure you'll, you'll see either. We have pillared walls in there. Let's see if I can give you any kind of a look. Looks like there are niches in there. It's very hard to see. Hmm. 
I think it's like niches in there. The door is, is sealed up. Whether that will show anything at all, I won't know till I'm in it. But it is a beautiful building. And those doors, as I said, are absolutely stunning. We've no name over it. We have some sort of inscription there, but I think the last word is God. It looks like we would have had um, rails around this as well. Actually over the door, it looks like there's a statue underneath that ivy. Maybe it won't show up there either. But that is stunning. Absolutely beautiful. but completely overgrown. So not a bad find, just as we have stepped into the cemetery. Right, so we're going to keep going and see what else we'll find. Now, as I said, it is huge. This is uh, the chapel. I think it's known as the Mortuary Chapel. I see a nice tomb up there as well. We will walk this way. We have an anchor and a cross here and a shield. Sarah Elizabeth, 1906. Widow of Stephen Ines, it looks like. And there's uh, 78 maybe. Also of Kate, their fourth daughter, it looks like. Beautiful monument. I can see another gorgeous monument just down here as well. Wow, look at the, the plates on this. George Christopher, Taylor MD, born January 1845, died November 1912. And Maria Louisa Taylor, 1918, a servant of Christ. In memory of Christopher Taylor, surgeon, 1873, age 62. Elizabeth, is it Perkins? 1862, age 49, and in memory of Sarah Elizabeth, wife of G. C. Taylor, MD, age 34, 1884. Those plates on it are absolutely gorgeous. I think there might be a copper. Memory of Margaret, beloved daughter of Christopher Taylor, 1874, aged 32 years. Memory of Elizabeth Taylor, 1950. Look at the size of the tree up there, absolutely beautiful. So this is the, the chapel I was talking about. So I believe this is the Mortuary Chapel. 
that's beautiful that lovely honeycomb stone as they refer to it Gorgeous. Beautiful. So we'll just wander around. and see what else we can find around the area. Another chapel just down there. Right, I've just noticed this one. I'm not sure I'll be able to get into it. We'll have to go around this way first, I think. Now it is really warm, the sun has come out. Another beautiful memorial. I don't see any writing. No, oh wait now. Sarah. Sarah, his wife, born November 1792 and died in 1864. So I wonder who Sarah was married to. Might have to... Thomas... Looks like Thomas Clark. Born 1787 and died March 1859. And uh, I'll just go out this way. Maybe we'll be able to take a better look at it. And it has a beautiful hedge that surrounds it. This hedge surrounds it and it's, it's right in the middle of it. So it's very pretty. Right, we are going to keep going this way, I think. I'll try to get out on this path again a bit. It's certainly easier. So this place is actually Bigger than what I first thought. But it is certainly beautiful. See another monument just there. We'll have to check that one out. It's a beautiful cross. like a tomb that's beautiful but I don't see any names or writing on it that's another entrance in and like a little gate lodge there very pretty as well Right, so I've just come down this pathway and would you look at this beautiful mausoleum. It is huge. 
it's almost like a temple now i have a cross here just beside it thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stand on thee to the dear memory of margaret wife of john p stancombe born july 1813 and died september 1886 and in loving memory of john perkins stancombe who entered into rest 1899 aged 85 there's also in loving memory of Fanny P. Stancombe, 1905, age 77. So I'm just wondering, would they be part of this beautiful mausoleum? So this is the Brown Mausoleum, Sir William Roger Brown. Um, he employed some a thousand people in his wool and textile mills and he was very much involved in charitable works, providing a local school. He gifted a town hall to Trowbridge, provided a local school, like we said, endowed two blocks of Lady Brown's almhouses in memory of his wife and left money in his will for the provision of fuel for the deserving poor. He also set up a trust fund for the repair of the mausoleum, which is now cared for by the Civic Society. So the reason the six feet tall doors were taken off Sir William Roger Brown mausoleum was actually to keep them safe because thieves had already stolen the bronze gates from the mausoleum in 2012. So the two doors that are six feet tall and made from solid bronze uh, said to be valued at £10,000 were actually hidden behind boards in a locked up non-conformist chapel here in the cemetery. So um, a chairman of the Friends of Down Cemetery and a councillor, um, chairman of Trowbridge Civic Society, both say that they are absolutely devastated by the theft. It was discovered after uh, the chairman of the Friends of Down Cemetery asked contractors who hold keys to the chapel if they could look inside to see the doors. There was no reported break-ins, so somebody had the key, he said. So far as he was aware, the only people who had the key were the contractors. Now, Wiltshire Council are the legal owners of the cemetery and the contractors work for them, so the theft happened on their watch. The incident was reported to police and hopefully the doors will be returned. On the back of this cross as well, it says, in loving memory of Ellen Catron, Baron Stancombe, dearly loved wife of John Frederick Stancombe, who died at Shaw House, Melksham. July the 20th, 1916, thy will be done also of John Frederick Stancombe, 1920, age 73. Now, just on the ground here, we have this. But we do have writing here as well. It looks like Margaret Horton, 1948, age 76. But once again, that is stunning. So we're going to keep going and walk around. Grey Visitations is actually here as well. So you're going to get the best of both worlds from both channels. You know, different monuments. We might have two different mausoleums or a couple of different mausoleums. But uh, I'm going to walk over this way now and see what else I can find. So we can see there in the background that beautiful chapel. And I can see just in front here we have this gorgeous urn. It's like a black or a grey marble. Albert Applegate, I think it is, son of William and Mary Ann Applegate, 1855 to 1858. So he was only three. Wow, what a beautiful memorial for him. That is stunning. We have more writing on this side as well. Memory of Mary Ann, wife of William, 18, 
68 or 88, also to be above William, 1907, aged 89. And her daughter Mary is there as well. It's a little bit harder to read. Lovely headstone here. Look at that one. Wow, such detail. See, 1837, but not quite sure of. It's Thomas. Not sure of the surname. That is gorgeous as well. Such detail in those. You can see there as well, we have loads of bird feeders, which is really, really nice. Now this area, I have to say, is so well cared for. We were in Bath yesterday and it's such a shame, but you know, we didn't get to read many of the memorials because they're all just completely overgrown. It's so sad. That is stunning, that chapel. Absolutely stunning. Ah, look at Look at that, little angel. In loving memory of Abigail, the beloved wife of Henry James Stone, 1849 to 1897, and of Lily Abbey Evelyn, daughter of the above. Born January, I think that's the 7th, 1882, and died April the 25th, eighteen. 82. So just three months old for little Lily there. Beautiful little statue. Nobelisk here. Looks like George, 1850 on that side. Not sure of what's there. Completely worn away. And I can't get in there to read. You can see it has this little railed area. Some damage there as well. And I'd imagine that cross there is part of that memorial. On this side, I do see John Henry Chapman, January 18th, 1859, age 77, and Lydia Chapman, his wife, 1860, age 74. And Emma Louisa, wife of George, Here, how dry the grass is under my feet. This is John Bannister, who died November 1891, aged 84. Be still and know that I am God. Also, Martha, his wife, 1886, aged 72. And John Allen, their son, who fell asleep in Jesus September 17th, 1900, aged 46. This one seems to be leaning slightly. There's a root banister there as well. We have nice designs as well on this gorgeous urn. We have Benjamin Barrister here as well, 1860, aged 82. That is just so beautiful. And look at this. 
the row of trees along the the roadway here it's just amazing autumn is not too far away when you see all the leaves on the ground here and hear it crunching under your feet I just love it I love autumn it's my favorite season and uh, as October approaches we have Halloween so uh, you know that's my favorite season I love it look at that and it's just beautiful what a gorgeous graveyard or cemetery it says cemetery online so we'll go with that more bird feeders oh I've just spotted this one it's after completely falling over in loving memory of a devoted wife and mother Rose White see that sticker there safety inspection laid down memorial this is 1944 so did they lay it down because it was dangerous or did it collapse I wonder and they've put that sticker on so whoever comes to visit will see it and hopefully fix it this is gorgeous look at this it's like a little bird bath with a holly tree beside it has become overgrown but still very very pretty Sacred to the memory of, it looks like, is it Leslie Thomas Mundy, a beloved husband, sweet, sweetheart and dad, oh, called to higher service, August 25th, 1945, aged 52. That is beautiful as well. There's just such peace in this place. Do you know that? It really is gorgeous. Look at this one. In loving memory of Helena Ann Mattock. Died March 1945, aged 56, at rest also of her husband, Herbert Howard. 1956, aged 78, and there at the bottom, reunited. How beautiful. Look at that tree, wow. And a pigeon flew out. Little tiny headstone here in loving memory of Julia Ann Johnson, 1958-72. Beautiful little headstone. And just ahead of me, I see a number of war memorial graves. Another beautiful angel just here. But just ahead there, we have several war graves. The 
Somerset Light Infantry, 1944, age 30, SW Howard there. Flight Engineer Royal Air Force, 1944, DW M. Giles, Sergeant. Private A. W. Hooper, Royal Army Ordnance Corps, 1943, aged 25. Trooper W. D. Gower, the Lifeguards, aged 21, 1943. Signalman R. W. Wake, Royal Signals, 1942, aged 21. R. W. Taylor, Sergeant R. W. Taylor, Royal Air Force, 1942. Private K. H. Burgess, the Sherwood Foresteers, age 23, 1941. Bandsman H. R. Stevens, the Royal Wiltshire, Yoa Manry, 1940, age 39. This one says buried elsewhere in this cemetery, but it's Private E. Bennett, Wiltshire Regiment, 1916, age 30. Thank you for your service and rest in peace. So we're back to that magnificent mausoleum again. Absolutely stunning. This is Private A.S. Newbury, Pioneer Corps, 1945, age 19. And there is one here as well. E.G.F. Watts, leading writer, R.N. H.M.S. Drake, 1945. So guys, I'm going to leave it there. An amazing cemetery, amazing mausoleum behind me. Um, and as I said, Grave Visitations is going to do a separate video here as well. So for now guys, take care, God bless, and I'll talk to you all soon.